Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick and we're playing Station Ears. Now today we're outside, we're about to have a bit of a play around with trade. Oh, I have done it a bit before but I haven't done it for a while and I think it's changed a little bit since I last did it. But we'll see how we go, we'll deal with that as we come up with it. Now so first up, a few things you're going to need. You will need a satellite dish, a landing pad, a vending machine, and a computer with a communications card in it and of course a buttload of cable but seriously don't put cable in your butt it'll hurt there we have it all wired up we'll need something to trade potatoes generally a good one very good we have traders now we see the number of traders we got here they're currently unknown but we adjust the angle of our satellite dish until we get this signal percentage up above 95% and then we can click the button and communicate with them. So we're just going to tweak the knobs on our doodad and see how we go. And there we go, we've got one. Connect on that, we find it's a trader, we can contact and a spaceship comes down and lands for us. We can now trade with them. And we just click on him and we've got trade. Well that is all just crap. Okay, just go away. There he goes. Right. So that's how we get him there. But you know, messing around with this is just a lot of messing around. So yeah, I think we're going to automate that in a big hurry. So, I'll need a chip and a computer to program it. And our computer is now attached. Now, we can hook up our satellite dish to pin D1, D0. Switch it on. It does nothing, of course. Now, I have done this a few different ways before. I've had a bit of an experiment with it, well, a while ago. And I tried it a few different ways. I first tried that it, the dish would just lock onto the, the strongest target and it would just seek it and hone its way in on it. I found that was pretty much the quickest way to actually get contact to a target. But actually then getting it to move on to the next target was the tricky bit because it didn't, didn't yeah, sort of had to get in there and then twiddle it away from the first target and hope that it didn't come back to that one again. So... I changed my mind and decided it'd be a lot easier just to scan the whole sky just in a systematic fashion and then just stop whenever it found something. So I went to my next one where I would it would scan the sky in a systematic version and then just save all the coordinates of all the traders into the stack and then you could just recall them once it had finished its scope of the sky. But the traders don't hang around for long, so I found that by the time it had finished its scope of the sky, it was only the last two of them that it found would still be there. You could scoot back through and find the other 20 that it found, but they'd all be gone by the time you came back to review them. So I threw that one away as well. And in the end, I found that, well, method two was the best way of doing it. So that's what we're going to program here. And... Uh, We'll see how we go. Now, the the, the uh, satellite dish is a bit of an issue, this one here, because you can scan it around from zero, around the 360, and if you want it to just continue going around, it can't, because it doesn't, if you set it from 360 to zero, it doesn't know that they're the same angle. It'll go all the way around, and then try and turn all the way back again, which is a bit of a waste of time. We don't want to be sitting there wait, waiting for that to happen. So we have to scan it, all the way around in one direction, we'll change the angle, then we'll scan it all the way back, change the angle up a bit further, and scan all the way around again. So, we're going to have to get the dish to move in that manner. So, that'll be our first task here. So, just for the purpose of testing, we won't get it to scan all the way around, because that just takes a long time. So, we'll just get it to scan through maybe 20 degrees, then tilt up, and just, we'll get it working that way. So here we go with our code. We have set, we have aliased our radar to pin D0. That's where our radar is connected. We have set a horizontal angle to register R1. We've defined a vertical angle to register R2. And we've defined a step, 
a step variable to R3. The step will just be the amount we move our radar dish by each step. Then we've assigned values to those to those variables. We've set the horizontal angle to zero, the vertical angle to 90 degrees, and we'll just set the step to four degrees. Now I've done a bit of experimenting there, and I found four degrees was just enough to catch all the traders. Uh, five did occasionally skip past them all, but four got them all, so that's the biggest step we can take without missing things. So I'll set it to four. And then our main loop, we just set the horizontal angle of the radar to our horizontal variable and we set the vertical angle to our vertical angle that we're tracking here. We've given it half a second to move to its position and then we've increased the horizontal angle so we're just moving the horizontal angle we're not worrying about the vertical one yet so the next step there is just to add the step to the horizontal angle and back to the start. So if we confirm that, export it and our dish should move back to its starting position and we're good now it's slowly moving around in steps of four degrees and that's doing what we want so now what we have to do is if we say if we keep adding four degrees to it again and again it'll get to 360 degrees and it should just stop we've got to check for when it gets to 360 and turn it back the other way um, for the purpose of testing, we'll just maybe take it around to 20 degrees. A few minute, two new lines of code in the main loop there. So we've just checked if the horizontal angle is greater than or equal to 20. Of course, that'll be 360 when we've finished it, but just for testing, we've got it at 20. It'll go to our alternate code here called change direction, which will just multiply the step by minus 1 and reassign it back to the step. So it'll essentially change it from a 4 to a minus 4. So when we add it, it'll just go back the other direction. And of course, when it's going back the other direction, we also want to check to make sure it hasn't dropped below zero. So two of them there, branch greater than 20, change direction. Branch less than or equal to zero, change direction. And if we export, it should go around to 20 degrees and turn back. Back to zero, back the other way. Good. So now... We don't want it to just go backwards and forwards like that. We want it to actually, once it gets to each end of the run, we want it to tilt tilt backwards, say, 5 degrees. So, edit. So, now, when we do our change direction, we can just add to that one there. We can subtract from the vertical angle. Five degrees. Confirm, export that one. And it tilts back each time it gets there. But of course we do also have limits on our vertical angle, so we can put checks on that one as well. Uh, so down here, once we reach, once the vertical angle reaches zero, uh, it can completely reset it. I could jump to a reset tag up here. So there we go. Once our vertical angle equals zero, it branches. If it's less than or equal to zero, it branches back to the reset, which will reset the horizontal and vertical angles and step back to there. So it'll be right back to the start again, and you can start at scan of the sky all over again. Uh, well, that's all well and good. Uh, if we change that to 360, it's now scanning the whole sky. Um, but we actually want it to actually stop when it actually finds something. Right, so in our Stationopedia, one of the properties of our satellite dish is the signal strength. So if we check that one to wait and see if it comes to more than 95%, uh, we can just get it to pause. So I can just put a check. Uh, as soon as it's moved to its new location, I can put a check just in here. I can load the signal strength and if it's more than 95% I can perhaps just pop out to another waiting loop down the bottom here. As we just load into R0 the radar signal strength branch greater than or equal to if that value is greater than 95% jump down to our wait loop. Now the wait loop is just an infinite loop there 
So once it actually finds a signal, it'll just go down here and wait. So I guess down there we're going to have to put in a button or something there to actually return us back to the code. So I'll have to add in a button, I guess. Now we have added in our button and we have attached it to pin D1. We have aliased our pin D1 and called it resume button. So it makes the code a bit easier to read. Now down in our wait statement, we just wait a little bit. Now we load the resume resume button setting into variable R0. If it's equal to zero, it hasn't been pressed. Just go back and wait a bit longer. If it has been pressed, continues on through the code and then back to the start. Where it once again, save our rate, save our signals and back to the start. Right, so you can confirm it, export it, and our radar will then stop and seek. And there we find it's managed to lock onto a target there and it's stopped. Now if we just press, if we can trade with them or I can just press the resume button and it's not working. Okay, I've uh, done something wrong there. Okay, see what I've done wrong there. When I've jumped down to the wait routine, it's done its wait routine and then jumped back to the start. So we're stuck, it finds a point, jumps back to this, this one, back to the start. It never gets to the point where it actually increases the step. So if I change that to a function, an AL, so it'll go into the wait and then return back to there, I can just change you to an RA. So wait, we'll stay in a wait loop until then it'll jump back to where it came from, which is right here. Then it'll add and then it'll go through the rest of its thing. So now it should be working. Export. I'm going to go back to the start. Oh yeah, he found it again. I'll push a button. Should okay, it's resumed. It did move a little bit, but it's locked back onto the same target because it's still above 95%. Again, it's still above 95. Again, it's still above 95. So when we have our radar dish, we do have a signal ID in that one, so we can. It does know what signal it's put onto, so I may have to check the signal ID. And once it's read it, if it locks onto the same one again, it'll know not to stop at it. So we might have a go at that one. So here's what we've done. We've defined two new variables, our signal ID and our old signal ID, which we've signed to registers R4 and R5. Now, when we load, just before we load our signal strength, we load our signal ID. We store it into our signal ID variable. So we load into signal ID our, from the radar, the signal ID which comes with the radar. So now when we go into our wait loop, it will check and see if the signal ID is the same as the old one that we've skipped on before. If it is the same, just ignore this. Just don't go into a wait loop, just scoot back to where you are, increase the, the step and back into your program again. If it's not the same one, it'll go into its wait loop. When you do press the button, we don't want that signal ID anymore. So what it does, it says the old signal ID is now equal to the current one. So next loop, if it finds it again, it'll skip it. Now the trick on this one is it will only remember one signal ID. So if you find another one and then it comes back to this one, you'll have to skip it again. But I think we can live with that one. Okay, we can see we found an unknown contact there. It is on 98%. It's 5005. I push the button. Okay, it, 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 it didn't stop on it again. It's just gone back. And we found another one. Here we find lots of them now. And that's uh, 7395. So I skip that one. Off it goes again. It's back into its scan. Now if it does get back to 5005, it will, rem it, it will have forgotten that one now, so it stops on that one again. So I've got to skip it again.
there we go next time it comes around it only just caught it then it was only just 95 percent on that one there the next time once it tilts another five degrees up it should miss it the next time around well there you go that is trading done well at least as done as i'm going to get it you could probably improve on it if you want but that'll be good enough for me for the time being uh, so until next time happy building see ya dude it switched off it switched off dude oh hang on you're packing heat you got a gun you expecting trouble think I'm gonna nick your spaceship yep. oh it's open Ooh. does that have collision hey oh it does it does it does oh this is cool come on rocket works when do I get one of these this is cool this is awesome I want one I want one Well, can I get in a fight with this guy now? That would be interesting. Now, ah, he doesn't seem to care. Oh, pfft. Ah. And he's still going to trade with me. Okay. Um, well, if you're going to be so polite. We got more ways to deal with that. <laughs> um, bye bye. Have a nice trip. Ah. Ah, oh, cock. Ah. Suit critical. Well, shit, what was I expecting? <laughs> surprised by that I sit underneath a spaceship oh I'm kind of stuck uh, excuse me a spaceship's on top of me woo woo I just do some shopping first you don't mind do you uh, I'll take some of that, take some of that. Your yeah, spaceship is very heavy. Oh. Ooh, some of that. Ooh, some of that. Uh, yep, that'll do. Now, if you can get your spaceship off me, I'll be very happy. Ow. Oh, ah. <laughs> uh, I need more than a roll of tape for that one. Owie, owie, owie. Cognition low. Yeah, yeah, just get me inside. Just get me inside. Ha ha! I survived. Um. Yeah, by rights, I guess, I guess I'd better. Oh, it's doing so well. Oh, oh. And I'd better go get a suppository as well. Yeah, that feels better. Hmm.
well, i didn't break my glasses.